This is our 6x4 diesel John Deere Gator and I just wanted to go over briefly some modifications that we've made to it that have addressed a number of complaints that we've had that I believe are common to this piece of equipment. Uh, first thing I want to go over is that we added tractor weights to the front. Um, this has very nearly completely alleviated all the problems that we've had with the front steering. Uh, these are 50 pound uh, tractor weights that we pulled off the front of our Bobcat Zero Turn uh, and the way we added them on was to add uh, two pieces of angle one and a half inch angle iron and to the front bumper and we attached them just by bolting them we gave them a coat of, coat of paint so they would be so they wouldn't rust as quickly and this is all held together with a pin you can buy at tractor supply uh, this is how it all comes off fits in there pretty much perfectly really really easy on and off and then That's how easy that is to get on and off. Uh, furthermore, you can see that the one and a half inch angle iron doesn't protrude past the front of the deer catcher. So if you want to put this into the bed of a truck or a trailer, all you have to do is take off the uh, briefcase weights and it will still fit in. Another problem that we ran into is that the radiator fan, which is located under the seat right here, right behind that screen, um, has a temperature sensor built into the top of it, which would be right around there, and it fails uh, rather commonly. Um, so what we did after replacing it multiple times to no avail was we removed it completely and then inserted this 70 amp switch. So it's on, off, and it's very easy to remember since it's right next to the gear shifter. Uh, to just turn it on every time you use it. Um, well, the way we installed that was uh, we welded on a bracket that's shaped like an L like this behind there and it's welded to uh, the body which is a pretty thick steel so it's pretty easy to weld to. The, the controlled unit for the switch actually sits on top of that bracket and so we so it doesn't bounce around as much we put a zip tie around it and that allows us to easily remove that if we need to because we can just cut the zip tie and put in a new zip tie. Uh, additionally, uh, behind this switch, which the, act, the knob comes off like that, um, there's a nut that I don't believe I'll be able to show you, but it's a paper thin nut. And what winds up happening is, is after, the, when the gator bounces around and rattles around, that nut comes loose. So. What we did to ensure that the nut actually stays on there is we drilled a hole through a piece of steel that's about 3 eighths of an inch, I think it's 7 16 is the diameter of the hole we drilled, so it fits the entire unit through there with except for the nut. Um, and then we just use self tappers to uh, attach this to the body of the gator. There's one on the other side right here that you can't see. <clears throat> uh, we added, of course, this box to the outside. This is just so that if we're carrying things like leaves or, or hay or something where there's a lot of volume but not a lot of weight, we can do that without it spilling over the top. And uh, as you can see, you can see through this by turning around. You can still see what's behind you. Um, that's uh, window screening that's surrounded by hardware cloth and it's held up quite well. We use just some leftover doorstop to hold that in place so that it doesn't uh, fall out. It's actually held in place by staple gun staples, but the trim around the outside prevents it from fraying and getting yanked apart. In the back here, one of the problem, common problems we have is with the, gate, with the tailgate. Um, there's a lot of problems that we actually have with the tailgate that we've modified heavily to resolve those issues. One of the major issues is that the tailgate is, was attached to the, bod, the body of the dump kit um, by just nubs that were just welded on the outside of this. And unfortunately, the second this tailgate gets bumped, those nubs have the tendency to bend upward, which makes the tailgate worthless and virtually impossible to get on and off. Um, so what we did instead was we just cut off those uh, nubs, drilled a hole through the outside, and pressed a rod 
right through the length of this shaft to the other side we put pins in place so that all you have to do is take out the pin hammer out one hammer one side out just a little bit and then you grab the other pin and pull the whole shaft right out it goes right back in just as easily uh, one thing we did have to do to get this to work properly is we had to put uh, spacers around this this is just half inch steel pipe uh, so you can go to uh, anywhere that would sell steel pipe and get a piece of half inch galvanized pipe and just cut out I think this is about five eighths of an inch you'll notice that there's some wiggle room well, that's intentional and that's so that we can get the uh, until get actually lowered and on and off much easier uh, doing so did require on one side the cut wasn't perfect so you probably can't see it all that well but we did have to take some half inch uh, washers weld them onto and weld them onto place to reinforce all of this another complaint that we had was that these nubs right here tend to break very easily um, so they're and they're paper thin so getting a butt joint weld is really difficult on them so what I did instead was take some leftover quarter inch rod we had laying around and bent it to the shape of that piece and then welded it on to reinforce it. You can see the where it's thinner, the metal is thinner here than it is up here. And that's completely resolved that issue so this doesn't come apart anymore and this piece doesn't fall through that hole, that gap. Another problem that we've had is that these black things that hold the tailgate up and prevent the tailgate from dropping to the ground, uh, they tend to come off when, you, when you're using them. Especially if you're using and lowering your tailgate constantly. What we found is that this end comes out of its position. Well, we tried a number of, we made a number of attempts to resolve this issue. Uh, one of which was to just glob welding material onto this hole to try to seal up the hole a little bit more. That didn't the, the metal here is paper thin, so again that, that didn't really work that well, and that didn't resolve the issue. So what we did instead was we used our die set to thread this end of it, and and that means that we can put a lock nut on there. Now the lock nut won't come out just from normal use, but we can get it out very easily by putting a socket on it and you know unscrewing it. But again, and and also this nut isn't is too big to actually fit through the hole that's behind there. It's just too big to fit through that hole. And the result is that this stays in place. Um, another problem we have <coughs> is that those black rods have a tendency to fall out of the tailgate during normal use because they don't have any tension when you put them in here. They're really loose. Well, ours is actually fairly tight. And that's because, and you can see what we did here, is we just bent this back a little bit. So what winds up happening is, is once it gets to that point, you're hitting the back of the tailgate. It creates tension and just takes just a little bit of force to get it into the position and it locks in place. And now these things do not come undone. They don't slide out of their holes. This thing doesn't break open from usage and the tailgate has no problems um, falling off whenever we bump it with something. Uh, the final thing that we did was you'll notice that these slots are a little bit wider than they should be and that's because this nub needs to sit inside this slot for it to actually hold it itself in place. Because of the modifications we did this thing doesn't it only barely fits in the slots. So what we had to do is widen the slots and that's just take your cobalt drill bit and drill it out just a little bit wider. And put the bit right there and just go across and now it fits in there quite nicely. What that does mean is that there is a tiny bit of little wiggle room right here but that's okay because we actually uh, want that wiggle room to make it easier to get the, the, the tailgate on and off when we actually want to remove it. Uh, and finally, all we did was just put on a cone of paint, and it looks a lot better once you get that painted. And that's our modifications.